On today's show, Linus Allmark shined in his Ottawa Senators debut, but did anyone else stand out in a 3-2 overtime loss against the Buffer Rochester Americans? And we continue our organizational value rankings with two players today, ranked 14th and 15th. They're the two newest players of the organization. We'll get into that and more on today's Locked On Sends. I'm Jake Sanderson. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators podcast. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, you are locked on to the Ottawa Senators, the only daily podcast covering the Sens. On the outskirts of enemy territory, I'm Ross Levitan, alongside Brandon Piller up in the Blue Mountains. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. You can also follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter, LockedOn.Senators on Instagram. The show is free and available everywhere you get podcasts, including on YouTube. Today is Friday, September 27th. We've been waiting two hours patiently for the final word that cuts have been made it sends are separating into an nhl and ahl group we'll get into some more of that in a little bit but first pilsey when did you know linus allmark would be the guy well ross yesterday's game kind of solidified it but for me it was never in doubt game seven of the stanley cup finals 15 minutes before puck drop when he became an ottawa senator that's when i knew he was the guy ross it wasn't when we were at the NHL draft and we went up to the Vesna trophy and saw that little engraving that says 2022-23, Linus Allmark. That guy's awesome. Seven minutes into last night's game, a little misdirection play, sliding left to right, and then all of a sudden the play goes back into the bumper slot position and he just casually pushes off his post, boom, kick save right into the corner. Allmark was tested way too much. The shot's 24-5 to in the first period, Allmark played half of the game and made 28 saves on 29 shots, Pilsy. It was a pretty unacceptable effort from everybody except Linus Allmark and maybe one or two other guys. Yeah, I can think of one other guy that had a good game. But yeah, certainly you don't want to introduce your new goalie like that, especially when you're up against a team as inexperienced as that Buffalo Sabres roster was like, I don't know. You could tell Travis Green was not impressed. Like his presser after. Uh, people I like were... that though. No, I like it too. I like it too. As I was watching, I was like, this is good because people were trying to get info out of him and he was just salty and didn't want to really compliment too many guys other than he did give Allmark uh, a nice compliment. How about Danny? Say like, anyone else you want to know about? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and well... then like, Noah Gregory, he's like, he skated. <laughs> Noah Gregory is actually one of the better players and just to he bring nice balance goal. to the situation. We said that he needed to step up. He was very unnoticeable other than being on the ice for goals against in his first game in Toronto. He had the shiny A on his jersey. That shows how inexperienced Ottawa's Alternate lineup captain. was. Yes. Alternate captain. There you go. And he was he was decent, but I loved Travis Green. He didn't blame the bounces once. Can you believe it? Yeah, seriously. Um, although Noah Gregor was one of the three players on the ice for that overtime goal, not great. But but honestly, that overtime goal, Ross, that's almost like a tip your cap to um sick shooter. Who? Isaiah Rosean. He's got the long pronunciation, but no, that's no, how no. he wants uh, it. Noah Oslin got the overtime winner. Oh, um, uh, uh, Rosean tied it late yes. with the one timer. Yeah, 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 which yeah. was a sick shot. Um but that was, that was just a good effort by uh, Oslin to get the goal. So you got to give credit where credit's due. Um, but Ross, what I love about Lena Sol, Mark, let's stick to the goalies. Hashtag goalie friendly show. Everything. Everything. But it makes me so much more at ease that no matter what, this penalty killing unit is going to be better than last year's. When you have a goalie that good, it automatically gives you a boost. And uh, I mean, heck, he was even clearing the puck out of the zone. Like this guy is an incredible penalty killer. So yeah, I, I'm a big Lena Salmark guy. Ross. Big the guy. Ottawa Senators probably gave up too much shorthanded time. The Senators six penalty kills in that game. They go six for six. Thanks Linus. Yes. And also we're able to, Somehow have a lead in this game at the start of the third period when Adam got dead scored on the power play, which just leads me to an unreal setup 
from Carter Yakimchuk. This guy yep. deservedly with the main group today. We'll get to our predictions for the cuts based on who was on the ice. A lot of special teams work. We'll get to that in segment two. But I want to stick on last night's game because we mentioned going into it. Look, if Yakimchuk's going to make this team, Pilsy, he's going to have to be a third pair guy. I thought him and Clevin, albeit they were the first pair in this game, but you know what I mean. He and Clevin both had great games. Yeah, and Ross, we finally got to see the K train on its tracks. Choo choo! That was a beautiful hit, and that I, I had a feeling it was going to happen in the preseason. And uh, oh, it's so good to see just clean on top of things. And when you look at it, like just from a size standpoint, if you're sending out a third pair with Clevin and Yakimchuk, that's six four six three. Like those are trees, not shrubs, as our friend Mark Mathot would say. So. I don't want to put too much pressure on Yakim Chuck, but every time I see him play, I want to see him more. Yeah, and you're you're going to get your wish probably, uh, especially Ross. I think it's obviously you don't want Arden Zub injured, but I think the fact that Zub is injured is giving him a little bit more of a leash combined with the fact that he's playing very well. Uh, I'm not going to take anything away from Carter Yakim Chuck's play. Um I'm still, I know our guy, Liam's Martian, wants to name Carter Yakimchuk the Norris Trophy winner for this season, but I'm still of the mind. If you want to give him the nine games, sure. I still think it would be best if he goes to junior. It's a little too much too soon. Again, not that I don't believe in Yakimchuk's ability. I just think that would be best long term. Our friends over at Hockey Stat Cards, which really matches the eye test, I find well. They post these after every Usually. game on Twitter. And Yakim Chuck analytically was the best player for the Ottawa Senators in last night's game. And it's not even close. And his partner is number two, Tyler Clevin. Third was uh, Zach Astavchuk, followed by Matthew Highmore and Adam Gaudette. On the other side of things, Kalen Addison. I've seen enough of this experiment. Undersized. Very easy to push around in his own zone and didn't really make up for it with any sort of offense. So I've seen enough, but it seems like he's sticking around at least through this round of cuts. Shane Pinto, another underwhelming performance. Again, we don't judge vets in the preseason, but it'd be nice to see him get the wheels turning a little bit here going into the second week. But you look at last night's roster and it is Linus Allmark and Carter Yakumchuk that stand out the most and not a whole lot else. And I think that it is time to get down to numbers here. They're going to have their fan fest tomorrow, which is an awesome family experience. Would highly recommend that for fans who have maybe young kids who love hockey. It's such an interactive event with the Senators doing a lot of activities outside the building, around the building. And of course, you get to see the Senators take practice on the ice. And you'll also note that Sunday's game is in Sudbury. It's the Crafts yes. Hockeyville game. And it happens to be on Carter Yakumchuk's 19th birthday. This kid's got to play on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. He's got to play. He's going to have a big game. And the guys can take him out for uh, for his first beer. The big nickel. There yeah. you go. So the Ottawa Senators lose 3-2 in overtime. Adam Gaudette scores. Noah Gregor scores. Two assists for Carter Yakumchuk. And Tyler Boucher got the primary assist on the second goal, a uh, little bit of a mishandle, I'll say, in the slot. He probably wanted to pull trigger on a shot. No, Instead, hey, he'll tell you that was an intentional pass. A little redirect <laughs> off the skate, nothing wrong He with fooled that. you too, Ross. He fooled the, fooled the goalie, fooled you too. Got him. Fooled everybody. Got him. So we'll see what happens when Belleville Sends training camp opens to start next week. All right, Pilsy, on the other side, lots of intrigue surrounding the Senators' power play units. Brady Kachuk not at the net front excuse me more on that conversation then we'll finish today's show with two more on our organizational value rankings you're listening to locked on senators your team every day today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at indeed we're driven by the search for better but when it comes to hiring the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global visitors. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. 
And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. So what are you waiting for? Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show, you're going to get yourself a $75 sponsored job credit so your job will get more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on the Locked On Senators podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Today's episode is also brought to you by friends over at FanDuel. It's the official sports betting partner of Locked On. NFL fans already know the season's underway and you can get a big return on FanDuel. When you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can go check out the latest stats, play-by-play, and so much more on the same page that you place your bet. I happen to be on that page right now. We've been rolling through a lot of NHL options. No, not the preseason bets because I have been getting rinsed <laughs> after last night's loss. But I like looking at the Hart Trophy. Who's going to win the MVP? Connor McDavid plus 150. Nathan McKinnon plus 500. I'll skip Austin Matthews. Jack Hughes plus 1100. If you want to get absolutely outrageous, plus 20,000. For Brady Kachuk, but all those are on FanDuel. Go check out FanDuel and you'll get started with a $200 bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's at FanDuel.com, official sports betting partner of Locked On. All right, Billsy. So the Ottawa Senators have now gotten three preseason games out of the way. That's how I'm going to describe them. They're not playing these preseason games. They're getting them out of the way. I can't wait. We're 13 days away from the home opener, and we will be at the Glebe Central Pub from about 2.30 until the bus leaves at 5.40. If you haven't gotten your tickets, you can get them online. And I just checked GlebeCentralPub.com, the online store. The Note, it now says, did you hear about us on Locked On Sense? Hit the yes and nice. go get your tickets. We will see you at the Glebe Central Pub pregame, and it's round trip, $17. Great deal. Vibes are free at the GCP, so make sure you go check out the Send Shuttle and come get to the game with us. Let's do the pilgrimage together. Two full buses. We have 90 people with the yes. wheels going around and around all the way to the CTC. Yeah, I'm fired up about that. Ross, I also like how for the preseason, First game, everyone's fired up. Second game, you still got a little juice. And then third game, when the Sens get their first loss, ah, let's just get let's get all these other games out of the way. I love it. I'll be honest with you. I already had a tweet concocted with a photo of Allmark and say, Sens have improved to 3-0 and this preseason. Oops. Had to, had to delete it. <laughs> Not delete, but I had it ready, so I just had to hit post. And instead, I hit the old exit on, on the other side. Exit stage left, the victory. Hey. Good news, Linus Allmark, despite, I mean, 966 A percentage, but all the work he got, he uh, he's laughing on the bench right after he, he left for his second half. So he's loving it. So that's oh, great. Yeah. Hey, just like I said, Travis Green said, it was, it was a full game's worth of action. He just did it in 30 minutes. Yeah, welcome to Ottawa. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> hey, the Sens still got the point right so no 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 but they did play in front of the lightest crowd i think i've ever seen at the ctc when you saw the the sabers roster you're just like oh, come on what are we doing sabers coaches weren't even there <laughs> yeah like they, uh, they had vinnie prospel former ottawa center he's now an assistant coach with rochester on the bench last night cool moment hashtag sends abroad but yep. look the sends had a lot of penalty kill time Today, they spent time, though, working on the power play. And that's a power play that produced a goal last night. But nobody who played last night was on either of these power play units at the top. But we did get these courtesy of our guy, Alex Adams. And I do think there's a lot to note from here. Most importantly, how do you feel about Brady Kachuk not being in front of the net? I think this might be the first time in his career. And I just left the photo of Linus Allmark because I love him. Uh... It's certainly weird, Ross, to to see Brady Kachuk. <laughs> yeah, the Allmark picture for the power play units. We're talking about how good of a penalty killer he is. He's so good on the power play, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but it is weird, Brady not being in front of the net. But also, look, 
this power play was the definition of dysfunctional last year. So if they want to try something different, I'm I'm all for it. At least try it. And at least, Ross, they've got Norris on his one-timer spot. Thank goodness I was going to pull my hair out if I saw any more of Norris not on the one-timer spot. Um, I think these are good power play units because the only concern I would have is the second power play unit doesn't really have like a bona fide shooter. But I think they're going to be able to mix it around enough. And I love the Giroud to Pinto. There you go. A nice uh, Giroud picture in there. Uh, the Giroud to Pinto bumper play. That's been really successful in the past. And then Ridley Gregg, although he's not the biggest body in front of the net, my God, is he going to piss people off? And hopefully that'll uh, create some chances. Something that I find interesting, and one, Travis Green last night mentioning that he doesn't like the first unit to play all two minutes or even 140. I think we are going to see a fairly even split, maybe 110 versus 50 seconds of power play time. But do you find it interesting that each unit's flipped? So power play one has a righty at net front. Power play two has a lefty at net front. But then the three guys in the bumper and the two half wall guys, all lefties on the top unit, all righties on the second unit. I would not have noticed that. Uh, I'm not as observant of you, but that as you, but that is very interesting now that you look at it. You think they would have mixed one lefty on PP2 and one righty on PP1. I'll give you a spin zone. I'll try to play from the mind of Travis Green and okay. uh, whether it's Mike Yo running the power play, Daniel Alfredson, I'm sure, has a big role in it as well. You're on side winger. So your guy who's actually playing with his blade closest to the boards is your playmaker on both units. You got Timmy on, yep. on the top unit and you got Giroux on the second unit. And we know Giroux likes to set up Pinto on that play you described mm -hmm. from his strong side. So I actually think it's going to work out well. Perron's got a sneaky one-timer on his off wing. He's going to be the trigger man on the second unit. So for our listeners out there, let's just run through it. Batherson's the net front with Brady in the bumper with Tim Stutzla on his strong side and Norris. Yes, thank you. Goodness in the one-timer position. Jake Sanderson quarterbacking that top unit. The second unit, Ridley Gregg in the net front. Shane Pinto in the bumper. Perron and Giroux on the flanks and Shabbat the quarterback there. I, I think this is perfectly assembled. I'm just very curious to see how it will change having Brady Kachuk away from two feet in front. Will this give him more opportunity to use his shot and maybe even score from a couple feet further out? And Ross, I think Brady is, just, he has a gravitational pull towards the goalie's crease. So I think even though he might not be the net front guy, he's going to be hounding any rebounds that are available from that spot as well. So yeah, I think this is a, a good experiment to try out here. Speaking of experiments, Pilsy, we saw the Ottawa Senators at practice today, and we've made it a, a couple assumptions ourselves here that the Ottawa Senators depth chart could look like this Going forward, the bubble guys who we think have made this round of cuts, Jan Yannick, Angus Cruikshank, Adam Gaudet, Zach McEwen, and Matthew Highmore up front. And on the back end, Donovan Sobrango, Philip Roos, Kalen Addison, and Carter Yakumchuk. What are your thoughts on that? Pretty much what I expected, Ross. Um Unfortunately, I'm not a big fan of Addison. Uh, I just haven't seen any part of his game that really excites me or thinks that he could be a part of this decor. So interesting that they kept him there. Same with Roos. Um, nothing against the guy. He just hasn't popped out to me. I like that Sobrango's getting an extra look here. A couple fights and a nice goal. So he's kind of worked hard and earned that. And as far as the forwards go... This is pretty much the group we expected, except I didn't think Matthew Highmore would still be in the mix here. Zach Ostapchuk would be the most notable cut. And yeah. I mean, Stephen Halliday too, but we kind of expected Halliday would need maybe one more top line stint and uh, and he'll get that we, likely in Belleville. But what do you think about Ostapchuk being a, a, a cut here? Yeah, I think that's just another decision where it's like, it's possible you could have made the team, but we think it's better for your long-term development to send you back to Belleville. So although I thought he was in the running, it's not completely surprising that out of the more veteran players, he he gets cut first. 
So we'll we'll see what the next step is for the Ottawa Senators. I'd imagine it's actually announcing those, but remember where you heard it first. If, They're driving us crazy, not announcing these cuts. Well, if you're wondering why the episode came out a little bit later than you may have expected, that's exactly why. Because we have not been officially told here at 1.15 p.m. on Friday, September 22nd, who has been cut. But one thing I know is when we know, you'll know at Send Central on Twitter. We also have really been appreciating all the five-star reviews that have come in on Apple Podcasts. That's yep. the best place to do it. I know I've seen a lot of five-star zooms in the comments yes. on YouTube. The YouTube comments do mean a lot. They go a long way to helping the algorithm. But that Apple Podcast, those five-star reviews just say zoom. They go a very long way to helping the algorithm. Pilsy, we'll have plenty to discuss on Monday's show because we've got the Pittsburgh game on Sunday. If the Sens get a shutout, I will not be announcing anything. I will be very cautious after last year's game in Halifax against the Pittsburgh Penguins <laughs> in Kraft Hockeyville. But it will be a good opportunity because after that, I mean, they've got just a couple games left, and it's time to get down to the numbers of who is going to be playing together. And I'd imagine now that we have the two power play units together, they're going to want some reps with all those guys in the same game. So, yeah, it's getting it's to that time. time of year. It's getting that time of year. We're about to pack our bags, head to Ottawa. Can't wait for that. We're going to Montreal. Bonjour, mes amis. And it's going to be a very, very fun opening weekend for the Ottawa Senators. And never cheer for injuries. And it sucks that Drew Doughty got hurt. I was shocked then when I looked at the Sen schedule. They play LA in the third game of the season. Yeah. Now, Claire Hanna mentioned to Travis Green, it was a very fair question. She said, look, how do you manage having your players ready to go for game one, but also having the issue of they could get hurt and then you're starting without a solid player? And he had a great answer. He said, if you're not up to speed and getting those reps, you're more likely to get hurt when you finally play. So I thought that was well said from Travis Green. Yeah, uh, although there are some nuances to that. You could also be grabbed from behind and slew-footed by a Toronto Maple Leaf player, and that doesn't really have anything to do with your conditioning. Yes. Okay, on the other side, organizational value rankings continue. You're listening to Locked On Senators, your team, every day. Today's episode is also brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. You guys know Game Time is the official ticketing app of the Locked On Podcast Network. We love Game Time because it's the best way to get tickets. And they got a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier, if you can believe it. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff, shows you only the incredible deals on great seats, so you're not wasting time searching through thousands of tickets. Game time, you can get tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Check out the all-in pricing feature. Make sure you turn it on on your app. I got it on. There you we go. got it on. Filthy, look at this right here. Home opener for the Ottawa Senators. Th these tickets are in our section for the same price we paid. 100 US dollars. It works out to about 135 per ticket. Section 321. I want those tickets gone by the next time I look. Yes, agreed. And if you haven't got your tickets for the home opener yet, get on it now with Game Time. Get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. Lowest price guarantee means Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find cheaper tickets. They got the best customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for 20 bucks off. Download game time today. What time is it? It's game time. All right, Bilzy, we've made it to another Friday. Just one more and then it'll be the regular season the following week here. Locked on Senators. couple huge guests already booked, but we don't tease yes. guests until they are recorded. <laughs> you know why. So all that to say, the organizational value rankings, we better get it rolling because we've been counting down all the way from 64 to number one. Today, we're going to do 15 and 14. And coming in at number 15, it's a me, a Mario. Michael Amadio, one of the best nicknames on the team. They call him Ammo. And Ammo. this guy is going to be a jack of all trades, and he's going to be playing in a number of different roles this season. 
Yeah, Michael Amadio was brought in as the Swiss Army Knife player of the Ottawa Senators, and I believe every team should have one of these guys. And it provides so much value, and the Vegas Golden Knights, they found out exactly the way to use him, which is anywhere and everywhere you need. And <laughs> that's why Michael Amadio got a three-year deal for $2.6 million in free agency. I'm sure there was other teams going after him, and the Sens probably had to tack on a couple hundred K and maybe an extra third year to seal the deal here because playoff teams know how valuable guys like these are. Heck, even teams that aren't, like, for sure contenders. You need guys like this in the regular season when injuries happen or if chemistry is just not quite the same or you can't have uh, your top line stacked with all your best players. You got to spread the wealth to make things a little bit more even and get some chemistry going. That's why you have guys like Michael Amadio. The Senators thought they had a guy like that in Matthew Joseph, but it didn't work out that way. So they said, we got to get someone that can do this role properly. And Michael Amadio is a guy that has proven he can do it properly. Back-to-back -back seasons with 27 points last year in 73 games, 14 goals, 13 assists. Now, maybe that doesn't pop out at you uh, stats-wise, but I think he's the type of guy where he doesn't necessarily need to be putting up consistent offense to be an effective player. He's six foot one, 205 pounds. And what I'd say, he's not like a, a beast or anything else like that, but compared to Matthew Joseph, who financially he's replacing almost identical contracts, actually 300,000 less for Amadio, he's heavier. He's going to be heavier on the puck. And I think that breeds more consistency in the offensive zone. Joseph, awesome off the rush. No doubt about that. He can fly. He's faster than Amadio. But I think that in zone play, both in the offensive and the defensive end, you're going to see a tangible improvement having a Matteo there. And you got to think a guy like this is still at the peak of his career for at least the three years on his contract. And in free agency, how many times do you see term overpaid? So for them to be able to get this guy for his 28, 29, and 30-year-old seasons at a reasonable cap hit, I think is a very tidy piece of work. We'll see where he fits in best. I think from what I've gathered so far, maybe starts with Pinto on the third line. I think that could be a nice little one-two punch, but you'd want probably a bit of a skill guy on the left side of, of that. A guy who can maybe have that quick offensive instinct, and we'll see what happens next for the Michael Amadio storyline. But I think the less we hear about him all season, the better, right? He's going to be one of those just work bucket kind of guys who just goes about his business, not never too high, never too low, but Maybe I'm speaking out of turn because he did have five goals and 10 points during the Vegas Stanley Cup run in 2013. Yeah, that's the thing. He finds ways to be useful. Ross, I actually, my first kind of mock lineups, I actually prefer Amadio being on the left wing with Norris and Batherson. That way Perron can be, a I, or I hope, can be a really good third line player and provide some veteran uh, leadership to like, let's say a Greg Pinto Perron line. I think that would make a really good third line. And well, Michael where's, Amadio then where's could, Pinto then in the middle, Greg Pinto, you oh, read lines yeah. left wing center, right wing Ross. We learned this. No, we we didn't. This. Well, I, I got um, final thoughts on today's show. Okay. I hope it includes the poll we put up, uh, but I would love to see, a second line of Amadio Norris Batherson. That way Amadio can be the guy that's getting them the puck. And then on the third line, you have hopefully can provide some offense to that bottom six with Perron being down there. So I'm excited about M Michael Amadio coming in, uh, returning to Ottawa, I should say second stint question more, yes. more same or less than 14 goals for Michael Amadio this year. You know what? Positive Pilsy 15 goals for Michael Amadio this year. And 14 assists? Uh, 12 assists. Got to keep him at 27 points. Yeah, I, I, I would be content because Amadio is not the type of player we're going to be looking for points. We're no. going to be looking for a beyond 50-50 shifts, right? Give me a 60-40 60, 60 shift for Michael Amadio where you're in control of the puck a little bit more. I think that's going to be great news. So Michael Amadio, he's come a long way from his brief stint with the Ottawa Senators during the COVID-shortened season. So I don't want people to think back to that version of Michael Amadio that could barely crack a fourth line on that Ottawa Senators team. 
And just know that he's coming here with the Stanley Cup ring and a whole lot more experience. So Michael Amadio comes in at number 15. Good Sault Ste. Marie boy at the Ottawa Senators. Signed for three years at $2.6 million. All right, that leads us to number 14, Nick Jensen. The master of none, you could say, but a guy who's going to be very competitive, very sturdy, and very steady defensively if things go well. He's six foot one, 205 pounds. He's 34 years old, and he signed for two more years, this year and next, at $4.05 million. Nick Jensen is a very interesting player, obviously coming over in the Jacob Chikrin trade. Um, different player than Chikrin, a right-hand shot and much more veteran experience, and that's what the Ottawa Senators needed. Ross, I will admit, I've been concerned about Nick Jensen. I feel like everyone is just speaking into existence what they want him to be. And I'm not exactly sure that's what he can be. But realistically, he just needs to be the fourth best defenseman on this team. And I don't want to say that's a low bar, but it's not a high bar either, right? Like when Chickren was brought in, there was a high bar for him. Whereas Jensen basically needs to be a steady defense partner most likely, in my opinion, for Thomas Shabbat. I think they're going to keep Sanderson and Zub together. Um, so I'm hoping that at 34 years old, he's still got a bit of that juice left and he can be a good partner for Thomas Shabbat. Much like Amadio, the less we hear about Nick Jensen this season, the Definitely. better. Yes. <laughs> like he he is just going to hopefully, and this is all me being positive and trying to find the, you know, the silver lining. And last year was probably his worst season in a while. Like they're they're buying low on Nick Jensen, but they believe yeah. that him being on a in a partnership with Thomas Shabbat or Jake Sanderson, whatever it ends up shaking out being, it looks like it's gonna start with Shabbat as of September 27th when we're recording this. But you just look at the confidence. I, I watched the his full availability yesterday, and he just brings that like nothing's gonna phase him. He's been around the league for so long, and I just think defensively. They were giving up so much with number six on the ice oh. last year. So much. And it was so unnecessary at times where he was just on the wrong side of the ice. That's not going to happen with Nick Jensen. It feels like he's going to be positionally sound. It's just going to be about limiting mistakes. And one other thing that I think is very worthwhile pointing out about Nick Jensen, and it, it shows last year, but it goes beyond that in his entire career. He doesn't take penalties. He never puts his team yeah. down. Last year, he had five oh. minor penalties. The year before that, he had uh, he had nine minor penalties. He's yeah. never had wow. more than 28 penalty minutes in a full season in his entire career. Chikrin was at what last year? He had so many unnecessary penalties last oh, year. Chikrin had more puck over the glass pims than Nick Jensen had total. Chikrin had 60 penalty minutes last year. You can add up all four. Wait, you can actually add up all oh my goodness uh -oh. how many years can i go back you can go with the full year before covid and he's at 70 like <laughs> this is this yeah. is a player that's, that's going a good point to, ross it's 50 50 play when he's on the ice and that's a win for for the senators for nick jensen you know what i had really overlooked that i i like that point ross because because that's that's a big thing too is if you're playing smart, simple hockey, you're not going to get in positions where you find yourself out of position and you need to trip hook or, um, or flip you're, over the glass. yeah, or you're panicked and you just flip the puck out, out of play. Like my lasting well, memory of Chikrin is his face when he's looking at the official, like, did I again? Yeah. Well, mine's a similar one. It, I can't even believe it. The producers at uh, uh, TSN, they had such an easy job. Okay, Sens get scored on. Show the player who scored celebrating the goal. And that other camera, camera three, is already on Chikrin's devastated face. And it was just rinse, repeat. Every single goal against on the Ottawa Senators, that was the process the producer or the director at TSN went through. I've got the uh, stat right now. So last year in 82 games, Chikrin had 60 PIMS. Uh, Nick Jensen has 63 PIMS in his last 284 games. <laughs> wow. So Nick Jensen, certainly oh. I think an improvement defensively on Chikrin. Obviously, he's going to give back a lot of what Chikrin put up def offensively. So to have one more fun with numbers moment, 
Chikrin had 41 points, flip it, and you get Nick Jensen's 14. So certainly the offense isn't going to be there the same way, but you got to think if Thomas Shabbat has a more reliable partner, it opens him up to be able to have more production in yep. the offensive zone. That storyline, the Jensen versus Chikrin and, and, and how they overall play this year is going to be fascinating to watch. But Nick Jensen at 34 years old comes in at number 14 on our organizational value rankings. They will continue next week as we continue to get up to the top tier, which is getting more and more contentious by the day with the way that certain players have elevated their performance over the last number of years. I can't wait to, to find the conversations and the, the discourse that will, that will come of the top two tiers. Ross, I still have a qualm with one of our, our biggest battles uh, near the top, and we're going to have to hash it out because I, I'm i not willing to back down from it uh, quite yet. So that'll be interesting when we get there. Final thoughts on today's show. Speaking of qualms, I did a poll of two NHL broadcasters who both say center, left wing, right wing when they do the lines on TSN 1200. Shout out Dean Brown and Gord Wilson. Okay, uh, I did a poll on Twitter. I'm gr- I'm glad you got a, a two person poll. That that's a good one. Uh, the poll I had had 858 votes, with 86.5 percent wow. siding with me that you simply read left to right. It's just how many, the way you do it. How many votes? 868. I have a feeling that there's less NHL broadcasters in that 868 than I got. Well, the question wasn't how do NHL broadcasters say it. It True. was how, how do people generally say it. There's dozens of us <laughs> that go center first. It's the most important position up front, and also it's like when you say he's on that person's line, you're doing it's always the center. It's not that's on the Kachuk line. No, that's the Stutzel line. Okay, it's the centerman. Okay, it'll be fun. Hey, I've been doing it for 1,100 episodes. I'm an old man yelling at cloud. I, I change is hard for me. Oh, I'm not saying you have to change. It just provides a lot of uh, confusion when we're doing lines and I automatically do it my way and you automatically do it your way. And you're like, what Brady's playing center. No. <laughs> <laughs> on locked on senators. It's locked on centers first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Oh no. It's all in good fun. Uh, Pilsy, any final thoughts for you? Final thoughts for me is everybody in Sudbury, enjoy the game. Craft uh, Hockeyville is is such a cool idea, and it uh, allows smaller towns to kind of get some limelight. So the people of Sudbury, enjoy your time. Yeah, and Elliott Lake, the official small town community, they just didn't have a rink big enough to host an NHL game. So mm, it's going to be in Sudbury so that they can fill more people where the Sudbury Wolves play. Please don't mic up a player you're gonna cut after the game like they did last year with Igor in, in Cape Breton. That was that was tough. Yeah, that is that is tough. They mic'd him up. They're like, watch Igor go home. Next day he's on waivers. You're like, oh <laughs> well, he's, he's going home, then he's going home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But uh, it's been a great, great day, great week. We're one Friday away from being one Friday away yes. from the regular season already being underway so we're looking forward to all that and more for today we say goodbye for brandon pillar i'm ross levitan this has been another edition of the locked on senators podcast your team every day